In today's video training session, we are going to be discussing date functions in SQL Server 2008. This is being brought to you by LearningSQLServer2008.com. As far as the functions, um, there are quite a few functions relating to date, time, and the reason for this is that obviously, unlike the other data types with uh, date time, you do have uh, many different portions like the day, month, year, and also the actual hour, minutes, and seconds. So this makes it a little more complicated than other data types. And I have listed here uh, some of the functions we will be using. And instead of uh, talking about these before doing the actual demo, I think it's a, it's a, it's a better idea to just switch to uh, Management Studio and just go through these one, one by one. So, so the most common a function that is used for dates is a get date function which is out of the box what this one does is it gives you today's date so what I'm going to do is go ahead and highlight this portion and then I will just be executing which I do that by pressing F5 so what this does is it gives us uh, today's date down here with the actual time uh, in our minutes and seconds so that's definitely uh, you will be using this function quite a bit if you are working with SQL Server so the next one is uh, the date add function this one uh, really is used to add time interval to the date argument so if you look at the format by the way if if you wanted to know more about the syntax of these what you can do is uh, you can highlight this portion and if you hit F1 uh, I think we covered that in one of our other videos it's gonna bring up uh, the books online which you can actually download to your local machine or you can also uh, look at this online now this is gonna list pretty much all the you know functions that are related to uh, you know related to date and time you'll notice the get date is right there and uh, the one we are looking at is date add okay so uh, that's a great resource uh, on this if you wanted more information I'm actually just going to go through these one by one and uh, you know really give you the bottom line information on what they're used for so coming back to date add uh, this will be uh, typically used if you have a date in mind and you are trying to uh, maybe uh, you know go to go into the future or even go back so for example here uh, today's uh, for, from today's date we want to look at next week's information so what you do is you add date add pass in this uh, essentially interval which is going to be DD for day uh, we want to go seven days in advance and we want to start from today's date you could you could have actually uh, put in today's date also uh, I'm just uh, using get date function here so let's go ahead and see uh, we already noticed that today is in case we forgot it it is January 6 so if we run this function and it works properly this should give us January 13 and it, it does in fact what it does is it also gives you the correct uh, time also so that's your date add function what if you wanted to uh, project uh, maybe you know six months from today okay so that should be I believe would that be uh, July July 6 exactly so that's six months from now uh, what if you wanted to go to uh, next year from today uh, and now for this one notice that we are passing YY and we are going one year from today so this obviously should be 2011 uh, with today's date on it you could have also added two here to uh, go two years from now so you get the idea so date add is definitely a nice function to have uh, now the ones we already looked at uh, these are going in, essentially into the future but like I mentioned you can also go uh, go go back in time and now here I'm actually adding um, another way of doing this you are going to notice in SQL Server uh, just with you know anything there's so many different ways of doing things so what I've done here is what if you wanted to go uh, a week ago from today you well you could start with get date which will be today's date and then it's going to go ahead and subtract seven from that so let me see what we get with that 
so it goes to uh, December 30th of last year. Now let's try the same thing with date. Now the one thing you'll notice here is we use DD like we have seen before, but we are going to use a negative number which will basically take us back uh, a week from today. It should give you the same uh, answer which is December 30th. So it looks like uh, that works pretty nice. Uh, let's just keep going as we have a lot of things to go over. Uh, what if you wanted to go you know a month back from today okay that would be December the 6th now this one I will mention it it is a little bit tricky because uh, you know some months are 30 days 31 28 days so uh, you know this this is a little uh, tricky to use but nevertheless it does work this takes us back to December 6 uh, I think a better way of doing this would be to use date add function uh, you know passing in the uh, mm as your uh, factor essentially and then going minus one okay and so you know that is um, essentially the same information now what if you wanted to go you know go a year go back a year from now so you could again do the get date function this will take us to 2009 um, but I prefer using the date add function which in this case we're really not adding we're going back but uh, since we have a negative uh, parameter, it should take us back in time. So that was the date add function, which, like I mentioned, can be used to add or subtract uh, a certain time interval from a specific date. The next one is date part. And before we look at that, I'm actually going to go ahead and click F1 so that we can uh, pull that information. And essentially, let's see. So it looks like it, it takes you essentially back to uh, some functions I'm going to I think pretty much that I think that one link does have all all the functions on there so we just kinda have to go through the list so uh, this is the one we're looking for and what is this is going to do is it's gonna return an integer that represents the specific date part of the date so in other words let's say you know if you're looking at today's date and we were interested in finding the month which would be one this is the function we are going to use okay um, and so let's let's go ahead and try that um, for today the, the date is actually I think I have something else going on here too so I'm going to go ahead and turn that one off um, so for today, it's January 6th, so let's see if that does return that, and it sure does. So this one, as opposed to the other function, is going to return just the specific portion of uh, the date. And we'll keep going with this. What if we wanted to return the month? Uh, and now this time you'll notice that we are actually passing a date. Uh, which is yesterday, so this I believe should return 1, which it does. That's great. Next one is year, and this should return 2010. Got it. Now you can even go one step further and you could return HH, which is used for the hour. Uh, looking at the time right now, it's 3.15, so I believe this should return 3, if I'm not mistaken. Or 1500 that's uh, you know military time works for us all right so that was one way to uh, get essentially portion of the date another method is to uh, use these specific functions so what I'm doing now is I'm using the day function okay and I am passing uh, today's date as the parameter so let's try that by the way you, you could you know highlight all of these and execute them at the same time too so there you go okay uh, the date today, month, and year. Okay, so we covered day, month, year. So far so good, we are making good progress. Now, the next function uh, is definitely um, a lot more practical because a lot of times, you know, you may have columns, uh, different columns with different dates in there. Maybe you have an orders table and, you know, you are trying to uh, 